greater order of service. Amen. At this time, we're going to go into testimony. Amen. Because I know that God has done something good for somebody this week. Yes. I say, I don't know about you this morning, yes. but I'm going to give God the praise all the time. I said, church, I'm not, a, I'm not who I was, amen. I may not be where I used to be, amen. But I'm giving God the praise this morning. For my eyes have behold the beauty of the Lord, amen. When I look to the heavens, amen, the heavens declare the goodness of God this morning.
true meaning of loving myself. And I feel good in my heart this morning that I could stand here and tell you this morning. Greater love this morning. Greater love this morning. God have my eyes this morning. As I love myself, I have to love you this morning. And I glorify you. I feel good in my heart and good in my soul. I praise the God. There is nothing like loving yourself this morning. I, 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 I wonder if we really, because it took me a while. It took me a while. So loving everybody else and, and not myself. To so doing things for everybody else and putting myself on hold. But this morning, and every time I put myself on hold, I didn't realize that I was putting God on hold because God had something to do, something He had trusted me to do, and how I'm going to do it. I glory God this morning. I praise God. My class won.
I lost all strength. <laughs> Literally lost all strength. I'm giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Hallelujah. To Chester, to the moderator for today, uh, to Rhonda and Angela, to the household of faith, um, to my nurses, and to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I preach you in a wonderful, wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. I, the topic is trusting God for tomorrow. The lesson is coming from. The main portion of the lesson is coming from um, Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8. But I'm going to read Jeremiah 17, 1 to 10. Um, it says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the tab table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills? O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy orders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So the key verses. I trust in God for tomorrow is the topic. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Goes on to say the heart is deceitful and above all things and desperately wicked who can know it i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings i rest in the 10th verse all to the honor and glory of god Amen. 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 Um, so initially when i, I got the topic I started looking for a verse and uh, Jeremiah 5 to 8 came to me and as I studied a little bit and I read and I usually kind of ponder in my heart it's important that I also read the beginning and the end and, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the beginning portion of it before we go into us. Um, Alright, so the, the, I'll go from verse 9 specifically. Verse 9 is important because in the, in the fifth verse it says, don't trust man, right? But, and it's basically saying you're not trusting man because man's heart is desperately wicked and above all else evil. It tells you that if you trust God more than man, trust man more than God, then you'll be cursed. And it's not that we can't trust people, it's that we can't put our trust in people. You have to put your trust in God. But you can trust somebody. You can trust somebody with information because everybody needs a friend. I want to tell you all a little bit makes sense because it didn't make sense to me. And I have a, um, I've always had a love for the books of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah. So when I used to study a lot, because I got so connected to the books, it was Jerry, Zeke, and I. Right? That's, that's my boys, Jerry, Zeke, and I. Jeremiah, and Isaiah, and Ezekiel. Um, but it's a long time since I've studied. So it talks about the sin in the beginning. It talks about the sin of Judah shall be written. And it is, I love this because it stays on somewhat on the topic that we've had for the last three weeks. It talks about sin and what sin will do. Right? So it says that the sin, this is a, is a bit of a commentary that I search out to share. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is engraved on the tablet of their heart. 
So the commentary on that says, right, that's verse 1 and in the first part of verse 1. It says that when people of that time wanted to assure like a permanent message or whatever, they would engrave it on a stone with an iron stylus. So stylus didn't show up when we got um, the iPhones and thing and they have the stylus pen, right? They've been doing that a long time. With a diamond point was the premier instrument for engraving because it made it possible for that to stay, right? It stayed permanently. So for this to be a thing that will happen now in our time mm -hmm. is because, or to them, is that now it's going to be a flash, like your sin is going to be showing, it's embedded so you can see where you have done wrong. Right. Yes. Right? That, that's the um, analogy, right, or the metaphor that goes with it. Um, so it tells us a little bit of some other instances in the Old Testament where it talks about engraving. God commanded Israel to engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the 12 stones, one on each stone. He said, engrave the words holy unto God, right, on a, a rosette or a pure gold. God engraved the law on the tablets of the covenant that Moses brought down from Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. Um, then I want to share a little bit about the horn. So, like I, I read it purposely because it goes on to say, if you're doing all of this, if you, and now that sin is, is taking over in that area, and he wants to show what's happened to them. Yes, down the road in this same Jeremiah, it shows that even though God was angry here, that it shows where he was, he repented of his anger. So he didn't stay mad at them forever. Um, but they, there were still some rules and some changes they had to make, and they had to trust him. Um, then it talks about on the horns of the altar. It says, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of the heart and upon the horns of the altar. The horns of the altar were things that came out of the four corners of the altars and for the burnt offerings back in the day, right? Um, but now what it's doing now, the reason that it's showing that your sins is going to be there, it says in this commentary, right? No, this is something that I studied. Um, that it becomes like a permanent sign, a permanent accusation against you for the thing that you may or may not have committed. Um, so it's there to remember what they've done. It goes on to say, verse 2, whilst their children remember their altars and the groves. So the groves, and these are like shrines that they make, you know, they, tr they know God, they know the way of God, but still they're building up shrines and they're finding other things to trust in besides yes. God. Yes. So like today, our, tr our shrines and our altars may not look the same, but we're finding ways to trust in other things besides God. Yes. And someone will say that's not true. Huh. But before we go, many times before we go to God on a situation, we, we call a friend. Yeah. And they said, when, when you're on the phone with a friend, you know what? <coughs> so, so, you know what I think they're going to pray about it, you know? I better just go and pray. But that's after you already called the friend. Many times we do that. So God is now upset because we're not going to him first. We're trusting in people first. Um, lesson says, I just wanted to give you all a little bit about that. So it, it kind of makes sense. The lesson says trusting um, God for tomorrow. But even when I first got this, what came to me more is, how are we today? How are we today? Do we trust God? Because if we talk about trusting God tomorrow, do we trust Him today? Like this morning when we woke up and we thought about whatever, it's Sunday, so everybody kind of get happy on a Sunday. But when you make up on Monday and you remember that it's August 2nd and rent is due or some bill had to be paid or something, how are you today? How are you today with God? Because before we can even think about trusting Him tomorrow, and think about what would happen tomorrow. What's your present condition and present relationship with Him? How are you feeling today? What experiences do you have? Because trusting somebody is based on some kind of knowledge of them, some kind of information that you've gotten on them, or some relationship that you have with them. So how is your relationship with God? How much are you trusting Him? What experiences can you lean on? Because to continue trusting Him for tomorrow, you kind of have to lean on the experiences that you already had today or the experiences from the past to stay trusting him. Um, it, it encourages us to, now here's what happens. We could be cursed if we lean on man. So every time you're trying to do something, it don't seem like it's working out the way you want it to. It's because you put your trust in people. That you've chosen to invest 
the deepest part of your life, the deepest part of your thoughts, with man as opposed to with God. So God is not pleased about that. Um, it gets hard. Admittedly, it gets hard because we're going through changes in life. We might. For me, I tell you all. Let me see. I said it last week. I get cut left, right, and center. There's not part of me that that word didn't cut the last three weeks. But last week, it cut me open. I, was, I won't tell you all the story, but I was given a story about years ago, and literally I saw guts on the sidewalk. And that's how I felt like my whole guts fell out and was on the sidewalk. I get cut so bad from the word. But here's the thing about that. That when you get to that point, it's only gonna cut me because I'm doing something wrong. You know, it ain't cutting me because the pastor threw his stone. It cutting me because something I need to fix. Yes. 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 So your relationship, when they cut you open like that, right? This the only person to heal you is God. Amen. The only person is to know His word, to get involved with Him, to get more connected, and to repent mm -hmm. for whatever it is, whatever the situation may be, the thing that you're getting cut up with, is to repent. It may not be the same sin as David, and it may be. It may be the same kind of thing that happened. You may have seen something that don't belong to you and lost it. It may not be a woman or a man, but something that doesn't belong to you. And instead of you trusting God for being able to provide a similar thing to you if you need it. Because sometimes the things we lost, so we don't really need in our lives. Right? And it's not in His plan for our life. But instead of us trusting God for today or tomorrow for that provision, we go and get ourselves into problems and we go after it for ourselves. And we trust ourselves to get it and not waiting on God to provide it for us. Um, so I get cut. And I'm healing. Praise the Lord for that. That's I repent, you know. Oh gosh. I stayed the, the first week. Is it the first week, Nursey? The first week. I said to my nurse, one of them, I think it's the first week when teach made the altar call. I said, so what happens if they make the altar call and they say to repent, but you ain't really sorry yet and you don't feel like stopping the thing you do? What happened then? And teach walked up while I was saying that to her. <laughs> He's like, why are you looking at me? And um, because, true, so every time they make an altar call and you come up, you're going to stop. They will say you're going to stop. But it's an emotional moment. Yes. Right, and that's what and we hear that. It's an emotional oh, yeah. moment. We don't know. Because here, whatever the thing is, let's say it's a boyfriend or a husband. Let me say boyfriend. Because husband you committed is a different yeah. thing. Let's say boyfriend. You know that person ain't right for you. You know the situation ain't right. But the milk and the crackers and the cheese and the flour and the whatever you bring in and the sugar that you need. Yeah. Have it out here. You ain't gonna have it. Or the rent or the phone bill or the light bill or the gas bill that you need and without the boyfriend, you won't have it. You stay in the situation. But what about God? What about God? And then the pressure still on. That's the curse, you know. You pressure because you have chosen to rely on this human being. That's what this word is saying here. Curse is the man that relies on man more than God. This is what this lesson is saying. The blight, it goes, you're prospering, but you know it could be better. Think real hard, but I work. I'm making it through. Think hard and all, but I, I, I'm making it through. I'm making it. How are you making it if you're not relying on God? And we we were not designed to just make it. Amen. We were not designed to just be just just barely getting along. That wasn't His plan for us. That's happening because we are cursed, like the word said. And we are not walking. You could walk out of it because my favorite scripture. I want to stay here because I'm a master. Um, one of my favorite lessons, Deuteronomy, that it talks about the curses and the blessings. Um, it says if you hearken diligently unto His word, and then you'll be blessed in this area and that area and this area and that area. But if you're not, you'll be you're cursed. Yes. It's all about heart, listening to Him and trusting Him. Amen. God is not changing his mind about anything, right? We change our mind and we decide yes, today sir. or tomorrow. His That's word right. is the word from beginning to end. Yes, sir. Take no thought for tomorrow is, is the beginning and end. Yes. Because yes. I promise you yes. that I got you. Yes. But we don't believe that. Yes. We believe Johnny got us because Johnny flashing some dollars. Yes. We believe Mary got us because yes. close yes. pin. Yes. So she got to like me. When I squeeze yes. and tell her how good she is, Mary there for me. Oh, oh, oh. Come on now. Oh. Hallelujah. 
We're not even thinking about how God say, you know, Mary and Jesus, call Mary and Um, <laughs> um <laughs> We're not thinking about how that's drawing us away from God and how we, listen to me. We are not cursed because he, God does not like us. God loves us. Yes. He sends his son for us. We are cursed. We bring it on ourselves because we don't follow his word and go according to what he says. Yes. We are cursed because we choose the wrong things over the right. We are cursed because we choose to lean on man more than him. Hmm. And he's a man in his word. Yeah. We only want God's promises when we're doing the right thing and we want to hear the sweet things. But God's promises are sure. Amen. Whether they're the good ones, what we consider good or the bad ones, what are the promises that if you do this, you're going to be cursed? What are the promises that if you do this, you're going to be blessed? Yes. His promises are sure. His promises are true. He cannot lie. Amen. It is up to us to walk in the promises that make sense. Right. It's up to us to walk in the blessings and not... You can imagine you have to think about it. Curse here, blessing there. Choice. God here, provision, Choose. raiment, shelter. Yes. Johnny here, if you love me, you're going to do this. I'm going to yes. give you the flower, girl. I'm going to give you the thing. Mm. Close fit. Okay, yes. baby. I got you. <laughs> we choosing this every time. You see how much further I went with Johnny than I did yes. when it was gone? Because that's what we do. It's that was deliberate. Because yes. that's what's happening. We're going yeah. here. God, I thank you for Johnny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Baby, stay home today. Stay home. Baby, stay home. Yes. Oh, God, baby, you can watch now. Every day I have to go to church. My God. And yes. Sunday is church. Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, John. Okay, Lord. Yes. You say I gotta be even. That goes for marriage or single. Yes. That one for her marriage and single. Amen. Amen. Because the journey in your Amen. life, I know, man, you marriage Amen. is ministry. Amen. And you have to think about your home and your family. That's right. But if you have a family member, I don't care how close it is, that pulling you away from God, mm. and you going, Problem. your house will always be uneven. Always, always. always be uneven. Exactly. So you're thanking God for Johnny or Mary. Are you forgetting God? Because now you've made them your idol. Yes. You've made them the thing that you could can't see. Some of these pages I ain't said nothing on these pages yet. <laughs> you can't see what God wants you to see anymore. You can't move the way God wants you to move anymore. Because you've moved away. Trust God for tomorrow. If it means, I'll call it. If it means telling Johnny. Peace. If it means telling Mary, peace. Hey, it's so hard. But God is, I can't even say God able. God is God. Is God. Yes. Able is what we can be. Right? God is bigger than able. You know God is able. Yes, yes. God is the creator. God is the maker. He's the beginning and the end. I am able to lift this paper. The words on here was created by God. Yes. It's bigger than that. Like we can't match up and we say God is able. I'm able to. I'm able to get up the stairs. Somebody call you. You say, sis, I have some extra. Can you come by and get it? Look on look on the, the last couple of times on the chat. It's about two times in the month of there was both July. Where we get in places that giving away boxes of food. Yes. He will provide. Free. Yes. You just have to show up. Show up, show up, show up. That's all. And that's what's happening even in the natural. Yes. You know, yes, but, oh God, it, it happened to me. I was like, oh my God, I wish I was there for a fine street hop thing. And I care how much boxes Wendy can take. Yes. Sister Wendy. Yes. I, want to, I wish I could get there. Yes. Things happen like that in our natural lives. That all we got to do is show up. And we make an excuse. Right. Trust God. Oh, God boy, you don't know what I've been through. you telling me to trust God. I, I know he could do it, you know, because, yeah, he could. Right now, my faith is weak. Trust him even then. Right now, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know what you're going through. I know, and I'm connected to the creator. I know, and I'm connected to the healer. You know, and you're connected to the healer. I know, and I'm connected to the deliverer. Fine. You see, when we lean on a friend, it's not, it's nothing wrong with having somebody in your life. To talk to a chapel.
connect with somebody who is also connected to God. Connect with somebody who will seek God with you for your deliverance. I am not telling you that trusting in God will have easy road and things won't be hard and all of that. It will be difficult at times. But His Word is sure that no matter what He will bring you through, He will be with you. His Word says, take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take thought for itself. Don't worry. We say, why worry when you can pray? But we don't really put that into, into practice the way we should. And it's normal, it's human to, to want to be nervous. Let's get this. My mom, I was up this morning. I was studying. And I went back to sleep at 5, 12. I lay down. But my alarm usually goes up at 5.15. I don't want to turn it off. At 5.47, when the sleep was sweet again, because I have a few time, my mom says, Troy's having serious chest pains and he got to go to the hospital. Part of me was like, yo, why are you waking me up, man? <laughs> Seriously, I was like, why are you waking me up? But for a moment, I kid you not, for a moment, I was worried. Because I said, oh, I didn't think COVID. He was in a car accident recently, so I'm like, oh God, I hope he didn't do something to his chest, or his ribs, and it's just now he's feeling it because he hasn't been feeling well lately. Worried for a moment, and by the time I got worried for a moment, and I got annoyed that she woke me up. Two seconds later, I'm like, trust in God for tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> and trust Him for today. And I was like, alright, Lord, I'm not worried. You got this. You got this. And this is what happens. It's not saying we're human, but we need to snap back quickly. Yes. Snap back quickly and keep yes. focusing on Him when it happens. When T said she was sick, I said. You know what? He did not bring you through eight surgeries to have you die from COVID. I'm not even worried. That's literally what I said to her. That was it. I didn't talk to her again until everybody started talking to her regularly again. But, and I, I truly wasn't worried because they, listen to me. If this is how we build faith and trust in God. Things will happen. And it's going to happen. It's going to strengthen. It's not a thing. So in between. I obviously knew that Teach was not as good as we thought she was. You weren't seen on Zoom and things like that. And there are things that will cause you to be a little shaky. But trust it even more. Show us and listen to me. Your word says you will deliver. Your word says you will heal. Your word says that I am the beginning and the beginning. <laughs> you are the beginning and the end. Your word says that I should be a lender and not a borrower. Yes. So how long? Ch challenge him at his word, but he, it don't come just so. No. What are we doing? Hallelujah. What are we doing? Yes, sir. Your word says if I tithe and pour into this storehouse, yes. you will bring out, right? You will have more than enough. Yes. You'll get food from it. Yes. But we have to do something. If you're putting in, how you're taking out? Yes. How we want to put him at his word? Yes. Then we want to say, Hey, there are times it's happened to me. I've challenged God on that. Mm -hmm. I grumble and I say, I tied in. But I wasn't working anyway. Brother D used to give me money. Brother D ties without fail. He don't play. He likes to say I tied from off the top. So when Brother D tied in, and all of his tithing, this money, he gave me money. And from the money he gave me, I tied. But we are one. We're one. So I didn't have to tie. Because he already gave. But that was my increase at the time. That was all the increase I had. So if it was only at $20, I tied that for my increase. So that the storehouse, the storehouse, so, you know, storehouse blessing. Storehouse blessing is when you put in something and now a little thing in the way it should be. It has storehouse blessing. Storehouse blessing is when you gain a little, all of the blue Mother's Day, $5. All of the blue, this thing, blue. What brother Tony said? This thing blue. Storehouse blessing. But if this storehouse didn't have nothing to give, again trusting in God, right? Because the person who the storehouse has not got a million people, so there have to be some faith and trust in God. Even when you reach into the storehouse and give of the bounty, because they don't have a million people to replenish, right? Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh. I want to talk a little bit. All of that talking nice. 
already tell you all about what it means to trust God, right? It says to trust God is to believe, rely, truth, ability, or strength on something in that particular person. It doesn't have anything to do with your feelings. Yes. It has nothing yes. to do with your feelings. That's Hallelujah. Um, it has nothing to do with your feelings. I'm going to wait my notes. Um, it has to, today, if you don't feel good, God is still God. Yes. Today, if the person gets you angry, yes. God is still God. Hallelujah. The word says to trust in him and not in man. Trust, thus shall the, the Lord curse be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. So at the minute that you start to rely on man, the very, your very heart, your very soul has left God. Yes. That's what the word says. For he shall be like a heat. It's like, you know, the little shrubs and things flat, going back and forth, they're rolling. When, um, like in Arizona, you see TV and they're showing the little bush flat. That's what it means. You're going to be all over the place tossing. You ain't collecting no dust. You ain't making no fruit. You're not giving forth anything. I shall not see where you're going, where you're coming, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and in a salt land and not be inhabited. So in a salt land, because salt is something that is good, yes. but in excess, yes. it is not. So when you are cursed and you're going through, this is when any place you're in a salt land is a place that's over salted. So it needs to be poisoning you. It's yes. polluting yes. your system. That's where you're going to end up. Yes. Right, that's what this is. This not this this salt. That is not a good thing. This is not a salt covering. This in this area is that it's too much. You know they say too much or something is good for nothing. That's what's gonna happen to you. And not in, it can't be inhabited because too many it, it, it can't, you cannot live there. It's poisonous to your system. But blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. So it's not that you should trust him. But even when things ain't looking so good, you're looking to God. God is He is all I know. Thing ain't looking good, girl, but I trust in God. Thing ain't looking the way it should, but I know God. My hope is built on nothing else. But are we at that place? Don't just trust Him today. I want, I really want to know. If you trust in Him today, it's fine. But if you're not sure about today, no sense I tell you about trusting Him tomorrow. I want to get you where you need to be today. How are things with you today? I want you to think about that. How is it when you leave here and you go home? Because we're good here, we rejoice here, we're happy here sometimes. And we just like, oh God, I prefer to stay. It happened to all of us. I'm like, I could stay here all day. Because when I go home, you don't understand. Things so different. It's hard and whatever it may be in the home. But trust God for that too. Trust God that when you leave here, Maybe not today specifically, but that he's already working for you in that situation. But it don't just happen like that. We have to talk to him and tell him, Father, I'm lacking faith. I'm, 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 something is missing, God. I don't know you the way I want to know you. I need a little more strength. Have communication with him. Many times we don't want to do that. We feel ashamed to let God. God already knows everything that's in our heart and our mind. He just wants us to confess our situation, confess our thoughts, confess our needs to him. And he'll fix it. Yes, he, will. he wants to hear from us. Yes. No sense you lock up in a corner and, oh gosh, I go stay home. You don't think hard. No. Share something with a friend. We can pray together. We can help each other. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. He has been constantly fruitful. You constantly have something to hear from you. And that spread it out her roots by the river. You stay. You're not thirsty. You will always be filled and shall not see when the heat come in. So all the pressure will the won't bother you. Heat meaning the actual heat from in a dry land and then the actual for us then, the pressure. You won't even know when it come in and it will not touch you because you're blessed and protected by God. But her leaves shall be green. Think about a plant. If this was standing here and it dry up, it don't have the same effect. You'd be like, why did I dry up that? What's the yeah. lesson? Well, we teach you, I think there's a lesson to learn and you're waiting for the lesson to hear. But it is a general rule. Yes. <laughs> right? No, because, because we trust her. We have faith. If we walked in here and the plant dry, 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 we're waiting for the lesson today. Because we have faith and trust that God has spoken to her. Right? And there's something that we're about to hear. Well, that's for me. I right? know about you, but that's me. I would be at my last day. I won't even ask, really, because that would be like, right, there's something there. Waiting on it. That faith times 
a thousand is what we need to have in God. Oh, yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Real, does everybody know real? We, 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 we believe and teach, we trust, teach and teach. Yes. Boom. That times a thousand in God. Yes. One because she's hearing from Him. Yes. Right? So it, she's man, woman. Yes. So if you have that, why not in God? If you believe the prophet as we've been here for the last three weeks. A prophet is a prophet because they've been sent and the word is true. Yes. But why to the sender? Yes. Why are we disconnected from the sender? Nathan was sent. Yes. Why you think David didn't run back to Nathan and say against thee and thee only have I sinned? He went to the sender and said against thee and thee only have I sinned. To God, how is your relationship? Trust Him. I want to encourage you to trust Him. But in order to trust Him, you have to have a relationship with Him. In order to trust Him, you have to talk to Him. In order to trust Him, you have to have a real prayer life. Not a, in my little bed I lie. Heavenly Father, hear my cry prayer life. You have to have a real time. You have love, you have love talks on the phone time. Have love talks with God time. Amen. Set aside time. Put it in your four-minute calendar. Amen. You have your friend that every day, I, I, one of my cousins, every day we text. Amen. And I've managed to control it now because you know what I do? A lot of times I caught myself doing waking up and looking at my phone. And I literally will touch the phone now. Well, for a while, I will touch the phone and go, No. All right, call it. God first. Yes. Yes. Talk to God. Yes. And I would lay there. It's only me, right? You never have to know what it is. No. Come on now. Come on now. And I lay down and I go, Okay, well, Say whatever. Talk to God. Hear what? It took me a minute, you know, because yes. I'm talking to God, and you yes. might hear the pain. Yes. So when you're talking to God, and you hear the pain, you're, like, you're trying to speed up the conversation, but you want to know what to say. Because here, here's the thing that, oh my God, I love God. Here's it, here. You try to listen to hear from God and have a sweet love with God. Who you trust. Yes but not as much as you trust man. Because yep. apparently what you think, the person on the phone has to say, is more important than what communication you could be getting with God at that moment if you would just stay still and meditate. Amen. You're hurry to finish with him yes. to hear what Mary or John is saying. But I have a quick you with him. Come on. Come on. Hello? Come on. Yes. Quick is nice, but not with God. At all. Oh, that's the Lord. Oh. No, really. That's the Lord. If you had to run, you had to go yes. Yes. But now with God spend time. Take your yes. time. Take because he time. spends time with you. Yes. Yes. He can do it in an instant. Yes. But God spends yes. time with you Take with your situation. Yes. When you're crying for morning, 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 we're crying. God ain't turning his ear. Yes. He listening wow. to you and to me and to the next one. All of us crying at the same time. time. Yes. You ain't no patience for that. Nope. She again? But God has patience like that for you. Amen. So why are we chintzing on him? Yes. Why are we chintzing on him? Why aren't we trusting him wholly and solely for all communication first? Could you imagine if you allowed yourself to hear from God first before anything else in the day? I have this Bible app. It's a 40-day thing that I was doing. Trusting God for the journey or something like that. Trusting God for the day journey. I saw laps on that thing. It's a shame. A laps, a laps, a laps bad. Until this week, I play catch up. I still am not caught up. But in reading it, 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 part of it talks about just that communication with God. Could you imagine how much better your day would go if you heard from God first? Yes. It's not that He's not speaking, it's that we're not tuning in. Yes. Right. He woke you up. Right. So obviously, He's concerned about you. Obviously, got something to say. He woke you up. You didn't have to wake up. I'm sick. Listen, I don't even care with you if you're married and it's a mate. Morning, honey. God, I thank you. I thank you that we both woke up this morning. I thank you that we both in the bed. I thank you that I didn't turn over and he dead or she dead next to me. That's real. Make him first. 
And if you if you have established that with your mate, they know all right, all right, I guess you five minutes, give you ten minutes, give you ten. With your married mate. Alright. Hello. Let me be clear. Right? That's for me too. Don't take no horrors. I ain't talking about nobody. That you married mate. This conversation here, I ain't not telling you that, but no mate to you should be like, no mate. Come. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Let me know. Because here what? Your sin will be hanging on the horns of the gold says this word. I don't want too much my thing anymore. So I, I, don't, I don't like to be seen. I like to not, like the camera frustrating me. I don't like to be on camera. So you could imagine. I'm going to say his name. I don't say his name. His name is Craig. On this altar here. I don't usually say his name. Colette and Craig. Colette and Craig. I'll come to church. Colette and Craig. Colette and Craig. I'm trying to keep my secret here. I sit down behind tall teacher under. Where you can't really see me. Yes. But the horn at the podium here. Yes. I'm Colette and Craig. You know what I say? And it's something to be ashamed of, eh? This being on the horn at the moment, because you're saying that not, this is not a good thing. What is it? Fix that! Oh. Fix that! Get Colette and Craig name off the horn. Alright. Sorry. He don't watch YouTube. He went up on um, if I said a video, you might watch it. Um, Johnny and Mary, let me say it. Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Johnny and Mary. Now they are going to call teacher and Esther and Come on. No, no, this is this the one. I want when I see my name here and hang in. It's good things. Yes. We all want that. Amen. Yes. Right? When your name call and you come up. Yes. Hear yes. what? When your name should not be removed from the book of life. Yes. It should not be removed from the list of the good books. Yes. We want our name to stay there, but it, it, it involves us trusting in God yes. for today, for tomorrow, for next week. Because if we trust Him, no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what is going on, no matter how sweet the sin is looking, we will know that that is not of God. Right? It can't be sweeter. Because no matter how much I love him, God loves me more. Yes. No matter how much I love him, God loves him more than I could ever love him. Nice. Hear what? Y'all know I was cutting myself when I come to you. <laughs> yeah. I think I got chopped up last week already, not chopping my own self up. Um, how much trust do I have? Let me talk to myself. I trust God, but I sin because temptation sweet. This, I think this is sin sweet, but before you even commit this sin, yes, the temptation does move into the sin. Yes. yes. So I want to believe that even the temptation have a little sweetness to it, yeah. right? Because it starts happening in here. The balance. Yes. Where is this gonna put me with God? Yes. yes. What's gonna happen? I don't know. You, if I say you don't trust God, you don't have enough faith in God, because if you do in His Word and know that what you're about to do, whatever that thing is, I'm just using that example, yes. it's going to draw you away from the love of your life, yes. from what you say is your first love, God. Yes. Could you imagine when you say that and you mean that and then when you think that will come to draw you away, you choose that instead? Mm. How much do you really love and trust God? Yes, Lord. I, I'm hungry, yes, I'm hungry. Oh God, I'm hungry. And Johnny, don't sell your soul for flour and sugar and bread. Is your soul you're selling? Don't sell your soul for 10 minutes. Is your soul? We do not know. You can imagine you enjoying a sweet 10 minutes and you're dead. You don't get a chance to say sorry, God, and hoping they will have mercy on you again. You can imagine when they exchange into yes, Mary, yes, Johnny. You're dropped up. There's no room for repentance. I say sorry before you do it and then do it. <laughs> hey, we do that. Yes. Oh God, I'm sorry, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, forgive me one more time, Lord. Oh God, sorry, Lord. I promise after this time, 
I ain't gonna do it again. Lord, come, oh God, you know, you know, you know how weak, Lord. You know your child. Oh yeah, we like that one. You know your child. Why you know your child? You, you know my weakness. Listen to me. That you have made relationship with the devil. Because I promise you, iniquity. Yes, I promise you. Though the avenue may be open for the temptation to be there. God did not put that in your way. That is the enemy that puts it in your way. God is there listening and seeing, waiting for you to make the decision for him to choose him. Choose his way. He didn't put Johnny, Mary, Craig in your heart. We start looking at how we're going to do it without him, how we're going to do it without her. When, oh gosh, well, if I go back to school, things will be hard. What will happen? Well, you know you need to go back to school. Trust God. If, if I take this extra class, what will happen? Trust God. I don't know what will happen. I know that he's a deliverer. And if it is the will for your life and the thing that you're doing, you'll sort him and his direction. And he say, go, go. Before you were even born, all we have to do is walk in it, but walk in it according to God. Walk, stop. You see it now. Walk. This is towards God. Be Johnny here. Be Craig there. Be Mary there. Find God. God is not lost, you know. But we are disconnected. 